Hello, I am Brandy from Taylor Farms Treasures and this is my first YouTube video. Um, I will have more videos to come with crafts and daily life here on the farm, but I wanted to take this time with this first video to give you an introduction of kind of how we came to be. So, um, I am the founder of Taylor Farms Treasures, naturally. <laughs> And um, this all began uh, about three years ago. Oh, maybe a little longer now. My time might be a little off. But um, when I met my husband, ah, but here we go. Here is the first member of Taylor Farms Treasures long before it was ever Taylor Farms Treasures. <gasps> Say hi, baby. <gasps> this is Stubbs. Now he is a munchkin, if you can see those stubby little legs. That's why his name is Stubbs. Um, and I have had him since 2011. He was born in May of 2011 and I got him sometime in September. Um, he was a rescue kitty and so um, I actually didn't want a cat. It's a pretty funny story. I didn't want a cat at all and uh, my friend was obsessed with munchkin cats and she has I think three or four of them and so she told me oh no you know you love my cat it's so cute you have to come see this cat I didn't want to go but of course I love my friend <laughs> so I went to see this cat and uh, in our area I don't know what the price is I know it varies from state to state but in our area where I was living at the time these cats were anywhere from four to five hundred dollars um, and then whatever if you wanted them papered. So I was told he was free and I thought well that's really weird. Why would a five hundred dollar cat be free? But anyway I go to this disgusting kitty and puppy mill house um, and he is there in this tiny little crate with no food, no water, dried blood down his neck where he had been mauled by one of the puppies. And um, the two ladies in charge of this mill um, had said that all of his litter mates were sold. He was the last one left because he was neurotic and he was causing trouble with the dogs who had just had their puppies. They had two dogs that had just had two litters. And uh, I saw the condition he was living in and, and despite the fact that I did not want a cat, um, I just told them, you know, put him in my car. He's free. <laughs> I will give him a better life. Put him in my car. So my friend and I, um, he actually got free and uh, we chased him down on the front lawn and he mauled the heck out of her hand. Poor thing. But she had brought um, a cat carrier. We got him into the carrier. We got him into the car. Um, I knew it was bad news when we pulled up to this place before we even got out and you could smell dog and cat grossness all over the place. Ugh, it was terrible. But um, anyway, I'm watching him in the distance as he's just doing his thing out there. I'm surprised because it's raining that he's doing his thing, but sidetrack. Anyway, so we got him in the car and then I had to go to work. And so I took him to work with me and um, he sat like a really good boy in his bag hissing at me under the counter the entire day and well, by shelves I was stocking shelves and things like that so I literally just carted him around uh, it was my second job the store that I was working in that evening <laughs> and uh, yeah got him home unleashed him from the bag and uh, that's kind of it for a week, all I saw was cat leavings in the box and food missing, and I thought, well, at least he's alive, he's eating, he's leaving excrement where he's supposed to. He was already box trained, which was nice. I thought, well, that's fine by me. So a week goes by, and I thought, oh, I'm gonna have to make friends with this beast if I expect to, you know, give him the good life that I wanted to give him. And so I dug him out. He had made himself a little cozy home and underneath the, ki the kitchen cabinets. I dug him out and wrapped him in a blanket 
and basically put him nose to nose with me while I watched an entire movie and slowly began to loosen the blankets until the end of the movie. Two hours later, he's totally and completely free. He could have run away, but he's rubbing his face all over me. And that's when I knew he loved me. And that's when I really fell in love with him and uh, renamed him <laughs> because I had initially named him Hercules because he was such a fighter getting him in the car. And uh, it wasn't until I got him home that week later that I found out that he wasn't a Hercules. He only put up the good fight, but he was really a lovey-dovey, sweet guy, and so Stubbs he became. Uh, so he's my first member of Taylor Farms Treasures, and uh, the second member, of course, has to be my husband, and that is because without my hubs, we would not be Taylor Farms Treasures. We would be some other random name, Probably not on a farm. We'd still be living in the city and uh, Who knows what I'd be doing? I'd have a garden for sure. I know that because I did have a little bit of property um, When I was living in the city, but it wasn't a lot. Uh, we don't have a lot here either. We are on 0.38 of an acre um, So that's just over a fourth, but it's not much. I mean, but it's enough that we can do our garden and um, have our chickens and that's pretty much where we want to be right now with our farm. Um, so my hubs is the reason we are Taylor Farms Treasures. He is the tailor. Uh, and now, so am I. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And uh, we, we first met and got together. We had two homes. I had my home in the city. And then he had his home out here. And uh, it's about 40 miles I want to say out of the city it's a whole different county so I guess there's a whole nother city town I wouldn't call our closest place to go grocery shopping a city but uh, it's a town um, but yeah so without him I'd still be living in the city probably not doing what I'm doing today for sure I know that because of him I have been able to quit my job and become a full-time mom and raised in the farm. These girls are almost two years old. They'll be about two years old in, um, I want to say July or August, something like that. Um, I got them from a friend who, um, I told my husband, I want to raise chickens. And he thought, babe, they're a lot of work. We, I, my mom raised chickens when I was growing up and I'm like, oh, my sister had two. My sister had two, one at a time. One chicken would die. She'd get another chicken. So it was definitely different when I said that I wanted to start a chicken farm. And he said, well, let's, you know, go over, check them out. We were going to get, um, I think we were going to get six or eight. I can't remember. Or nine. It was six or nine. Yeah, because we were doing in numbers of threes. And um, I got to my friend's house and uh, the coop was broken. And so all these chicks and the gate was open all these chicks were just free and she had a lot of them her son uh, she had let him do a project where he kind of just wanted to see how many chicks they could hatch and I was seven months pregnant at the time seven or eight months pregnant at the time and I thought I'm totally useless but she said you know catch as many as you want and because we were friends she was like no charge and I thought oh, well that's awesome so we ended up catching three <laughs> And uh, that was enough for me. I'd had enough running around. Um, couldn't even barely bend over. And it's kind of funny what we ended up catching. We caught a white Australarp, a black Australarp, and a leghorn. And um, our black Australarp didn't make it, poor little thing. Um, about two weeks after we had them here at the house, uh, you know, she was a runt. Her name was Baby Girl, and uh, she just didn't make it. So um, that was sad, but we do have the other two. Uh, we have Big Mama. Now she's our white Australarp, so she's quite a bit larger. She's also our aggressor, and so she's the one that makes it really hard with our new chicks to get them acclimated, which they're inside of the laundry room because we had a, a nice attack and uh, Mama attempted to kill JJ, our runt 
of the three Rhode Island Reds we have. Well, here we'll show you Gimpy. Um, now, her name is Gimpy because she's actually blind in her right eye, and then her comb <laughs> falls over her left eye. So she basically can't see unless she flops that comb up and um, <laughs> gives you a good Velociraptor look. Look okay, at, say hello. <gasps> say hello. So this is her, I don't know if we can get a good picture of that. She's got either a cataract or something fogged over her eye and the good one's there under the comb. And so she is basically blind. So we named her Gimpy because she's our gimped up chicken. <laughs> Aren't you? She's our lover uh, because I think she knows that if she was in any other circumstance, she probably would be food mad because now that I've, I've come in here and I haven't opened the gate to let them free range, they mostly free range all day long. And then what I'll do on warm days, I don't know if today's warm enough, is I'll bring out the three chicks and let them roam around here inside the garden area. So this is technically my garden and it is going to be my garden, um, which is why I am building the chicken run out of the carport, which is that building behind me there. Um, and I'm doing that for a couple of reasons. They need, Gimpy's an escape artist. Um, we used to have a sink right there against, there we go, this panel. She would jump up on that sink and escape. Well, we took that out. Nothing has changed. Somehow this chicken has, I have no idea. She's an escape artist. We have tried everything from uh, this fencing blocking off their area, giving them a smaller run in here so that she couldn't get up enough, get up enough runway speed to get up. Still can do it. So this is actually, I'm going to recycle this fencing that we have here behind me and I'm going to make that the doorway of the run. So I'm heavy into recycling. Believe that it is the way to keep costs down and effectively get stuff done. And so every inch of this is going to be recycled. Um, I've got, there she is. So that is big mama. Come here, mama. And you can see the size difference. She's quite a large bird and a little camera shy, it looks like. But um, she's our aggressor. She's definitely our tough bird, the one that we got. Um, the rest of them, you know, had their issues, which is I think why we ended up with them because they were easier to catch <laughs> but no uh, she was probably the one at the point in time where we gave up because she was so hard to catch we we're like three is enough as of now because our chicks are still so little uh, we'll go in the house actually and take a peek at them and I'll introduce you to them we are going to cut the run in half and uh, It'll still provide a lot of room. Now the chicks are gonna think it's a little slice of heaven because they've been in the laundry room. Not, not that it's a small laundry room, it's a quite a long mud room, but um, they're gonna be outside. They're gonna have a nice, nice roof where they can get into the shade. They're gonna get in the sun. They're gonna have soil where they don't have any of that now. The girls, unfortunately, uh, Gimpy and Mama, are gonna think I'm torturing them. Uh, when they're not free ranging, of course, when I lock them up at night. They are gonna be very mad at me that I'm putting them in a smaller area because the carport is, um, I'd say it's about half the size of this garden. The way I'm gonna build out from the rooftop and give them a little day run area that is gonna be covered on top with chicken wire uh, so that my escape artist cannot escape. And uh, so they won't be as happy. But come winter, the reason I told my husband I was moving the coop is because I'm not doing another hard winter and that's what we're supposed to have this year again. And once, you know, they had no room, they were out walking on the snow, mad as heck. Um, actually, they didn't mind the snow that much. Um, they hated that they didn't have dirt and stuff. So it'll be nice for them. They'll have the carport where they have all the dirt and then the open run area, they can come out in the snow if they desire and play. So that'll be really nice for them. Really nice. Well, let's go check out the little girls uh, before I go on another tangent about how cool my run is gonna be. And hopefully it'll turn out as well as I think it will. Um, I told my husband that I wanna do the whole thing myself other than I was gonna move his car 
Uh, he's got a uh, white Mustang in there right now. And uh, he told me I'm not allowed to move it because he's afraid of me hooking the Jeep up to it and not hooking, the Jeep has a winch, uh, not hooking it up properly and tearing off the front bumper or um, he hasn't had a chance to look at the car. So he wants to do that. I told him that's fine. He could do that. And he also wants to move the engine block. He's got an engine block in there <laughs> by himself. And I said, fine, I agree. You can move those two things, but everything else I want to do. I want this to be my project. I want to film every bit of it so that, I don't know, I can have a, it's like my first large project. I've done a million little projects, getting the house ready getting stuff together, but I've never done a huge project where I'm building something gigantic. Um, so like a huge chicken run for all of our chickens. And what we're going to do now is we're going to start getting uh, three chickens a year instead of just every two years like we have been. And uh, so it'll be nice to have the run. Okay, so here we are in the mudroom with the three little girls. They are all Rhode Island Reds, and this one here is JJ. Say hi, JJ. Now, she was the little one that was attacked by Big Mama, and you can see, come here, let me show off your pretty face. She's doing much better, actually. Aw, you pooped on my sweater. Chicken poo, you can't do anything about it. It's everywhere. Okay, so this is the one, here we go, facing the camera, where she lost all the feathers on her head. And uh, she had a swollen eye, and I was afraid she was going to go deaf, but I think she's pretty good now in that ear. Uh, on the, that would be her, her left side ear. But she's doing really good. Um, you know, after the attack, I really thought she was dead. Um, I thought she wasn't going to be able to handle it. And um, was really afraid that she was going to go. So really excited, really happy that she lived. And uh, she is my lover now. So yeah, she's doing amazing. I'm so proud of her progress. She can see again. We had a rough four days. Uh, three of them she had to be separated from her sisters. Um, I actually put, put up the baby gates and let them see each other through. But because she still had the red blood on her, um, hi Crimson, she still had the red blood on her head, uh, Belle here, this is Belle, all Belle, come here, turn around, look at the camera, uh, and that is Crimson who's poking her head in the corner, so this is Crimson right here up front, and this is Belle in the back, and, uh, I call her Belle because she had the two most beautiful beauty marks on both eyes. Crimson had one beauty mark and uh, JJ was the little runt and she didn't have any. But um, so that's how Belle came to be. She I think is the biggest. It's a it's a good question. It's pretty well matched between her and Crimson for who's the big bird out of this batch. But uh, yeah, JJ's definitely my lover now. She's the one that'll just uh, run up to me and uh, let me scoop her up and hold her for hours on end where the other girls, they more think, hey, where's the food? Where's my treats? I'll follow you if you're taking me to food kind of thing. We'll start, we'll, we're still working on the deep affectionate love here that's gonna come from them. And Belle's got this little funky toe. I don't know if you can see it where she bends the, the wrong way slightly. It's kind of cute. She's had that since she was a chick too. I don't know what it is. We get all these animals that have all these weird little things about them. Do you want up there too, Crimson? Come here. Come here, Mama put you up. You got it? You got it? Oh yeah. I'm thinking Crimson. Calm down. There you go. I'm thinking Crimson might be the big bird. She's definitely heavier than JJ. But then again, JJ was the runt. So, come here, Crimson, step. There you go, step on the wood. Good girl, other foot up there. Good girl, you missed, there you go. Three little birds on a the fence. They look so cute when they do that. 
Um, but there's our three girls in five. We have JJ, who pooped on my hand. We have Crimson, and Crimson's always been our little vocal one, and Belle. Yeah. So these are our new girls who are going to be so thrilled when they can go outside and have fun and uh, yeah, not be stuck inside. They love going and wandering, but they also, they fear Big Mama, big time. Uh, especially after JJ's attack, but uh, she's my little trooper. Oh. She's my trooper, and she's looking really good. Really good. I gotta take some um, vinegar water to her head, and that cleans it up. Good natural disinfectant, uh, very diluted vinegar. And uh, that'll help the healing process because it'll clean off some of that junk. But uh, yeah, so that's our farm right now. It's small. We just, like I said, we just started it three years ago and uh, we're working on building it. Next year, we are thinking of adding three Americana. All right, so the littlest member of Taylor Farms Treasures has now awoken. Boom, look at that bed head. This is little Taylor, little T1. <laughs> huh, are you T1? She's the first Taylor baby. What happened? You stuck in mama's lap? Yes, so a little bit of bed head, but other than that, doing fantastic. And, uh, I think she's the cutest Taylor. Don't tell my hubs that. Now nah, he already knows it. <laughs> what? You won't go outside with the girls? It's not raining anymore. Uh, but, so there's my, my little Taylor. And uh, I want to thank everyone, all of our followers. If you like this video and you want to see more videos from us here at Taylor Farms Treasures, please like and subscribe. We will be putting more videos out. They're going to be on crafts, projects, uh, just our daily life. All right, I'm gonna wrap this video really quickly. I want to say thank you to all of my followers, all the future followers. Truly amazing to have such a following already at what I think is the beginning, really, of my farm career. Um, I do wanna give a special thanks to Melody over at uh, Rising Faith Farm. She's the full reason I have done this. We've known each other since high school. She's really been the one to push me into doing the videos, into, you know, hashtagging. Ugh, I say it with such disdain. I've never been a hashtagger ever in my life. Uh, it was hashtagging, all because of Melody. Uh, definitely go over, check her out at Rising Faith Farm. She also has a Facebook, Instagram account, and like her, like her page, look at some of her videos, YouTube's under Melody Turner, and uh, we do a lot of collaborative videos together. I know she's still in the process of editing some of those, um, because I'm kind of a goofball, and so she has to cut out like 90% of what I do. So, but thank you, Melody, for being the big push. And thank you all. If you um, like this video, please like, subscribe, and follow me over on Facebook and Instagram, facebook.com slash Taylor Farms Treasures, and then on Instagram, Taylor Farms Treasures. Thank you so much. I enjoyed visiting with you today, and uh, I can't wait to visit with you again soon. <laughs> Bye.